Your Honour, with regard to my client, Johnny Wishbone, I would like to make two points with regard to both pieces of evidence submitted against him by the police with regard to the 106 charges against him. Uh, specifically, the police statement submitted with regard to the interview immediately after my client's arrest and the a record of interview regarding the second interview that took place at the police station shortly thereafter. I shall address the former first. Uh, it should be stated that even after arrest, my client's parents weren't contacted at any point. I mean, it was clear this was an indigenous child they were dealing with, and it's the police's responsibility to contact parents as soon as possible. Um, in addition to this, uh, for the duration of this uh, this deal initial interview with the police, there was no record of interview whatsoever. In fact, the statement itself is simply what the police claim was said and was drafted three months after the events transpired. Uh, this can be seen from the statement itself and of course makes the statement itself questionable in terms of credibility as it was drafted so long after the events actually occurred. It should also be stated that uh, the nature of the interview that took place in the unmarked police car as the police were driving my client to the police station was also fairly questionable. Basically, how it transpired was properties were identified by the police and my client was asked whether he actually broke into them, asked for admission. So, Did you break into there, Johnny? Yes, I think so. Did you break into there, Johnny? I don't know. I'm not too sure. Obviously, this is questionable and without the inclusion of a support person and, of course, without contacting his parents, this is in breach of a number of regulations uh, specifically within the Police Powers and Responsibilities Act and Police Powers and Responsibilities Regulations that I will elaborate on in due course. Of course, considering the highly questionable nature of this piece of evidence, I ask, Your Honour, to uh, exercise the court's discretion to exclude this evidence on the basis of it being unfair per Bunning and Cross and Iron Island. It was clear that the police were blatantly disregarding the law and I believe this to be an important point. Uh, the second point I'd like to address, like I said, was the record of interview that took place at the police station. Um, the police did provide a support person as per required under section 421, but where they breached the section was in not allowing my client to choose their own support person, which is of course a breach of section 421 sub 2a of the act. And again, as I stated before, my client is clearly an indigenous child, so section 421 is applicable along with section 420. Um, my client was absolutely entitled to a support person, this is beyond question. In addition to this, the support person was afforded an opportunity to talk with my client one-on-one, -on -one, as is required under the act, but stated that my client should, quote, tell the truth and answer the officer's questions, something along those lines. Um, again, this is also a breach of section 26 sub 1 under Schedule 9 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Regulation, that is, an accused person's right to silence. It's clear that this was disregarded because he was told to tell the truth. And of course, this resulted in him making admissions to the 106 charges and it's fairly clear this support person was not acting in my client's best interests. It should also be noted, Your Honor, that this support person is simply identified as an interview person under the police statement that was admitted, as I mentioned before. Um, this, there's no record of prior relationship with the client and it's it's not even known who this person actually was on the evidence admitted. Uh, it's highly questionable that this person, as I said, was acting in my client's best interests. In addition to the points that I've just mentioned, um, it's also worth noting that at no point did the police question my client with regard to education, level of understanding, and whether they truly comprehended what was happening and were capable of answering in a concise and intelligent manner. 
Um, this is an obligation under Section 25, Sub 3, Schedule 9 of the Police Powers and Responsibilities Regulation. And this is another breach Your Honour should consider. Um, again, I ask Your Honour to exercise the court's discretion to exclude this piece of evidence considering the multiple and blatant statutory breaches on the part of the police. Thank you, Your Honour.